And then if you get totally off track, you know, we'll do three, you know, each line, I'll do it maybe three times in a row. And I'm not going to do it exactly the same way. I'll do one where maybe I'm a little bit pissed off. Maybe I'm happy. Maybe I'm sad. And from that, um, they'll say, okay, we like, you know, at this moment you need to be sad. Okay. Now we'll give you three variations of, of, of sadness. And then if I have a question, well, tell me a little bit more what's, what's going on. Who is this character I'm talking to? And, uh, then they'll kind of give me a little bit more background in the story and that'll, that'll click something, um, something in as well. And also as actors on that game, very rarely are we working with another actor. We're working in a vacuum. So occasionally they may have recorded another actor that's in that scene and they can play that back. But you know that that other actor was, you know, doing their lines, uh, kind of guessing as to what 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 my character is going to going to be doing. So it's it's a little bit complicated. You really need to be uh, very sensitive. You need to be able to um, not get too locked into any one interpretation you need to be very malleable. You need to be able to bend and move and, and adjust with as things are going on. And and that's one of the challenges and one of the, the great exciting things about, about being an actor in a situation like that. It, you know, the hardest part is sustaining your uh, your focus. You have to have great stamina. You know, four hours seems like, oh, come on, four hours in front of a microphone. It's not like I'm, you know, digging a ditch for four hours in the hot sun. And that's true. But you really need to stay to stay focused because... Uh, whatever you do, it's going to be there permanently. It's not like you're, uh, you know, when they put the game out, that performance, I can't go back and, and change a line or, or improve on something. It's, it's too late at that point in time. So you really, if you're, you, whatever you do, it's going to be there forever. So I, I try to keep that in mind and, uh, you know, get, make sure I get plenty of sleep before I go into the sessions and take care of my voice and, leave literally all the distractions that might be happening in the, uh, the world outside. All right. I told you I, when I, once I start talking, I don't stop. Sorry about that. Oh, that, that's great. That's, that's, well, I, I mean, wanted, I, to, I'm just I wanted to give here. you a little, I wanted to give you a little inside baseball, uh, as far as acting is concerned, because, because that's what you do. I mean, we don't get the luxury of having four or five weeks to, to rehearse. So you have to make, choices pretty quickly and they have to be strong choices um you know if you go in there with a with a weak choice of well i'm not sure how i feel about you know that's that's going to be crap right so you have to you have to be bold you have to put it out there and you have to have the director say to you you know robert that really is totally wrong and not take it personally go okay then tell me what's right and and i don't care if the director gives me line readings it doesn't matter what's what's important is getting the work done and um, at the professional level, you know, we all we all kind of do whatever is necessary to uh, to get the job done. And nobody takes it takes it personally. It's only the insecure actors that get nervous when somebody gives them a line reading. Somebody gives you a line reading. They don't want you to mimic what they're doing. You're just kind of picking up on, well, OK, they want me to emphasize this a little bit more or the attitude may is maybe a little bit more angry or a little bit more passive, whatever it might be. And then you kind of internalize that and then you know do your own variation of that right so since the release of starcraft 2 uh-huh. do you get recognized more often for your voice in like daily life do you, do you go to a grocery store or something and the cashier gives you a marshall's discount <laughs> now i i wish every once in a while i'll mention it to to somebody and they'll you know they'll i don't know They'll ask me for an autograph or something, but I think there's this cognitive disconnect when they see me because I absolutely look nothing like Rainer. That uh, well, not you know, if you put a mask it, on. There you go. There you go. And I have to put on like another 50, 60 pounds or something. Hit the gym like real hard. Maybe I could put on one of those muscle suits or something. Right. Um, but you know, occasionally it's. Uh, but 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 not not a lot. I mean, cer- certainly I'm not getting you know people aren't rushing up to me when I go to to Starbucks and ask me about if I'm Jim Rayner or not. And and you know and that's, that's and that's kind of cool. That's one of the nice things about it is that you can kind of be under the radar a little bit and uh, and and enjoy it at the same time. I mean, I'm not I'm 
you know, I'm a pretty private person. I don't, you know, uh, spend my days going out there trying to, you know, put a cleat light on me so that everybody's going to pay attention to me. And, and I do a lot of other jobs as, as well. I mean, I'm one of those fortunate actors that gets to work all the time, but, um, you know, I certainly don't, don't shy away from it at the, at the same time. So it's, you know, I've gotten certainly a lot, a lot of benefits. Oh, you know what I like to do? I was talking about being kind of under the radar is that say it's at BlizzCon or even at the, uh, the, uh, I guess the launch of, of the game. Uh, I went down with, with Neil Kaplan who plays Tychus and James Harper who plays uh, Mengsk in the game. And we went down to, uh, to this launch and there was a big line of people out in front of a GameStop, and we were going to do an autograph session there. And I, I knew that nobody would know who I was, so I would just kind of walk up to the fans and, and play it like I was clueless, and go, "Hey, uh, what's uh, you know what's going on? Oh yeah, it's StarCraft. W what's that? Oh, it's this really cool game. Really, really. What's your uh, what's your favorite character? Oh man, I love Rainer. I say, really? Wow. Would you like to? That must be cool. Would you like to meet the guy that does Rainer? Oh, God, oh, man. Oh, that would be awesome. I said, well, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't they go, what? I said, yeah. Yeah, I, I play I play Rainer. Oh, my goodness. Wow, great. It, you know, and it's, I think about what I would like to have happen to me if I was a fan. I would love to have people that are involved in the game just come up and, and start talking to me and being just like a person. And listen, I'm, I'm just, I'm just a guy. I got a, I got a good gig with this, but it's, it's fun. Why not make it fun for everybody? Right. I mean, that's, that's part of why, you know, when you contacted me, you want to do an interview. Sure. Why not, man? Make it, uh, let's have, let's have fun. Right. And that's a great attitude to have, especially as a well-known person, a admired video game, you know, voice actor. It's, it's a good gig. It, it really is, and I'm very, uh, very honored to to play the role, and I feel very blessed to have the opportunity. And honestly, the the fans that are um, into this game, it's a very unique and very special group of people. Uh, I know I did an interview with one guy, and uh, and I I said, you know, it's it's like playing chess when you're playing StarCraft, and there aren't a lot of idiots that are playing chess. You have to have uh, have a brain. Uh, to be able to play this game and play it well. And the fans that play that, you know, that are into this game, they're pretty bright people. And they're also really, really nice. I mean, there's a nice kind of a geeky nerd factor. That's, that's very endearing. That's it. You know, cause that, that's, that's me as well. You know, I, I've, I've played a lot of <laughs> geeky nerdy guys in my life. And, uh, you know, I like computers and games and all that stuff. And now I, now I get to do this. So, you know, it's, I, at the very least, I want to be approachable. I don't want anybody to think that there's like some weird wall between me and, and everybody else, because there's not, if it, if it wasn't me, they would have hired somebody else. And so let's, let's, let's have fun together. All right. My next question is, I guess we'd be going off on a different line of questioning but uh have you ever like with your um jobs have you ever met anyone big in the acting slash voice acting vi business like someone like you know um martin lawrence or bill murray yeah you know that's, i've met i've met and worked with with tons of huge stars i was in um I worked in the, worked on the Green Hornets. I worked with Seth Rogen. I mean, it goes all the way back to when I was a kid. I worked with Peter Sellers. I've worked with Charlton Heston. I worked with Kathleen Turner. I've worked with uh, let's see, Bette Midler, James Caan. Um, oh my goodness! Uh, what's I mean? I actually, my father was the censor of Saturday Night Live, so I've I've met everybody that was on there. Bill Murray. Um, I remember hanging out backstage with, with Bill Murray, met, met Eddie Murphy when he was on the show. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, S Simon, Simon Baker on the mentalist with, um, uh, oh God, what's his name? Uh, oh God, you know, there's, there's, there's so many names. It's, 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 it's kind of crazy. 
um, Bill Paxton on, on, on Big Love. Um, you know, I've worked with huge directors, Paul Greenglass, uh, Greengrass, pardon me, um, Mark Rydell, uh, Michelle Gondry, um, you know, Academy Award winners. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Um, you know, I've been doing it for, for so long. And, you know, the the pros are, are 